We are moving on. Um, it was motion made by Representative Sean Powers, seconded by Representative Norman. Thank you. Okay. And I am, we are resuming our RTM budget meeting. It is Wednesday, May 10th. It is 7.42. First item on the agenda is CIP 7L. We've already listened to the minutes. We are on page 242. We'll get there and we will. Can we hear to speak on this one? <laughs> the number was on the floor to confirm that and who had this who put the number on the minutes from um, we are I don't know about okay. this, but I'm having trouble hearing you uh, I wasn't on I'm sorry it wasn't on a microphone the number on the floor was hundred and twenty five thousand dollars I just want to confirm that there wasn't any other number on the floor <coughs> hundred and twenty five thousand So we had asked um, a number of questions to Director Reiner, um, and so we tabled this motion, or we, um, yeah, we tabled the motion until today. So Director Reiner, if you would like to speak, I think he's on there. Uh, yes, uh, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development. Uh, so uh, I believe Brian Hancock is on the line also, um, and he had indicated that we do have um, hard servers, but we also do. I just lost you. That was my mistake. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Your boss just muted. I can, oh. actually, yeah. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. All right, Brian, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Uh, 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 the questions that I were presented to me was we we are currently planning to do an on-prem storage for the system. Um, we are going to be using uh, our tape backups that we currently have in house. We do incrementals daily with a full backup every Friday. Uh, cloud backups are on the schedule for this. Uh, daily backups and incrementals for those for the life of the project and beyond. Uh, we currently are have the town clerks uh, surveys, maps, et cetera, on a network, which we plan to set up the same way. Uh, we've had those on here for many, many years. Currently, we're sitting at about 10,500 files that they have access to. And that, that's about it. Um, any other questions? Um, Representative, sir. Yes, I had, I had, oh. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Just for the record, I am, uh, hold on one second, Representative Serp, I just want to make this clarifying. So I have people who already spoke last time. I am going to allow them to speak because there were questions that couldn't be answered last time. But if you have already spoken twice, to be, twice before, which is only actually Representative Serp, I'm going to allow you one more time to speak tonight. Um, and then if you've spoken, um, if you haven't spoken twice before, we'll allow you to speak regularly. Representative Sir. Um, okay. So, Brian, my question is, when you speak about the cloud, is it your own cloud? Or is it um, a commercial cloud, like from Amazon or Google or one of those? It's like the, the backups we use is a commercial cloud, Azure backups for us. That's what we contract so with. That's the Microsoft. That's the Microsoft Cloud, right? Yeah. Yes. So that's on their servers. Yes. And automatically, anything that you back up to their cloud, they will back up also, most likely. So there's a double backup there and using an external 
um, a cloud server. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah, multiple uh, data centers. Yeah, that was my main concern is that we were, we were nicely distributed everywhere. Okay, uh, you've answered my questions. And as usual, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Representative Norman. Hi. Um, just to confirm, I thought I heard you say this is a hard server. So will we we will be purchasing hardware, or we'll be using the town clerk's existing hardware and ex and like continuing to draw upon that server? How is this working, and why is a on-site server necessary and not just cloud? Well, we 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 looked at it both ways, and we decided that on-prem would work better for us. Uh, it would be a one-time purchase for the uh, storage units, the uh, pop store units that we will just add to our current uh, storage capacity um, with a probably a three to a five-year warranty on that hardware so there'd be no reoccurring charges. With the cloud-based product, we, we would incur a monthly bill for the cloud storage and the monthly bill for backing that software up. And truthfully, we I don't know how large all these maps are gonna be up there. I, I know I've been in the vault that it's pretty extensive, so. And we I know we just had, sorry, this is still Representative Norman. I know that we just had a, a different, in a budget piece, uh, replacements of servers, maintenance, are you saying that these serv new servers we're purchasing aren't going to require that maintenance, that replacement? I you set a three to five year warranty. So does that mean we're purchasing new ones in three to five years? Uh, we recycle our, our systems probably five to seven years. So these, these units would be in, in production for up to seven years. Maybe plus. Um. And then that would also, Brian, give you a better understanding of how much the total file sizes are of all these, how much memory is actually needed once they're all scanned. So a new decision could be made if needed at the time, is that right? That is correct. But you'll, but you'll have already purchased, purchased the hardware, right? Like versus cloud computing where you can expand your package and negotiate for more space in a much, much more flexible way that rather than having to buy additional cores for an on-site. I don't think the, um, I don't think the, I think the on-prem would work, especially for the gearing up of this, this program. I know there's some uh, long-term, like I said, a lot of, a lot of maps being uh, thrown in there. Um, I would probably have to say, whoop, you know, in the five to six year range when the hardware is scheduled to be replaced or in the replacement schedule, uh, I think a decision could be made there to uh, throw the, uh, the files up to cloud if it was deemed that they would want, we'd want to do it at that time. Uh, this, I'll, I'll just end my so the, so the hardware wouldn't go to waste. Uh, yeah, I, here's what I'll say. I will vote for this because I'm in support of this prior to so like until a year ago, I was a chief data officer for New York City and we moved to the cloud because it was cheaper with a ton of data, a ton of maps. And I just have to believe for Groton, we want to save every penny we can and not be doing all of this. So I will vote for this because I think digitizing is good. Five to seven years, I really hope, I don't want to see more like hardware because we're, like we want to come into the present with this. Thank you. Sounds good. Any other questions or concerns? Representative Gardner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I have a question for Mr. Reiner. Um, once all of these documents are digitized, what is going to happen to the actual paper documents? So some of the documents, we will reach out to the state to see which of those can be destroyed, if any, and others can be put into long-term storage. Okay, so every document has to be approved or disapproved by the state? Uh, essentially, uh, the types of documents that we want to destroy 
we do have to get approval from the state on them. Depending on if it's a memo to a file, if it's a permanent record, there's certain criteria that we have to go through depending on the types of documents. Okay, this is just a, um, what would your estimate be as to the percentage of documents that will be retained in paper form? I, I, I don't know at this time until we get into the project and we see what is in each file that constitutes the permanent record that the state requires to keep. Okay. okay. Um, Director Reiner, on that question, um, can you discuss the advantages of having this on the cloud and being digitized? What is the advantage for the residents of Groton? So then all of our documents that are in file cabinets now, uh, you know, on the first floor or things that are in long-term storage uh, buried in the basement, it won't take, all people have to do is keyword search. It'll be there, search by the, the PIN number or by the property address. They'll be able to access it, the general public, out on the web at any point in time. Items that are public record, but now take a substantial amount of time to go pull files, find the appropriate documents. That'll be at people's fingertips for them to be able to do um, at their own convenience from the comfort of their home. Right now, there's things that you can uh, search. Um, you know, some of our plans, some of our special projects we put up on the website, but we want to make this that easy. Thank you. Representative Surf, you've actually spoken already three times on this subject, so I'm going to ask you to lower your hand. Are there any other questions? Are we ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor of $125,000 for CIP 7L, please raise your hand. Madam Moderator, I just have a, a, a point of information here. I can hear all Sir, the people are who in are on online extremely clearly, and I can barely hear the people who are in the room. Okay, we will um, do our best to get Representative Sir, we are in the middle of a vote. Can we hold this for just one more minute, please? Okay, if everyone could put their hand down, please. If you can lower your hand, please. Representative Scott, if you could lower your hand, please. We're going to. Madam Moderator, I, I was supposed to be a yes vote. I okay, thank you. Computer to work fast enough. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise their hand. None. Um, anyone abstaining? Representative Gardner. Okay, then that motion passes 31, Third. or is it 30? Third I'm sorry, 30 to one. 0 to 1. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. I'm sorry, Representative Surf, you had a, a concern with the audio? Yes vote. You were a yes vote. Okay, thank you. We got you as a yes vote. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, then are we finished voting or are you finish? You gotta finish that first, right? We are finished voting. Can you hear me speak? I can hear you, but I couldn't hear anybody speaking from the floor. Okay. I, I assume that the person who was asking questions was Representative Norman simply because I, I heard enough that I assumed it was her asking the questions from um, from Brian, but that's I couldn't hear her specifically what she was asking. And it was the same with the previous speaker. Okay. Whoever's on the floor, I'm not hearing. It's all kind of blurry. I don't know about everybody else. Maybe it's just me. To the rest of the representatives, the of you, sorry, hold on. Re representative, hearing, sir, hearing. can you hold one second? To the other representatives online, can you hear what is going on, either what I am saying or what is going on on the floor? I'm getting a yes from Representative Massett, 
hand up from Representative Amboise. You are very, um, you are very uh, garbled. We, I can barely hear you, and I, it, I would agree the sound is very bad. You can't hear. It was me. much better last time. I are don't know you, what uh, you did last time, but last time was perfect. Okay, Representative Surf, I need you to please hold your comments for just one minute. Representative Abin, are you able to hear me? N now I am, but there. It, there's like a little echo and sometimes you do walk away from the mic and then it's impossible to hear. you're right when I walk away from the mic it is impossible I'm sorry and I will work on that everybody else is doing okay with hearing me and I will ask everyone who has a microphone um, in the audience just please speak very directly into your microphone next up tonight I, you know, Madam moderator on my end I just have to turn the volume up on my computer and I can usually hear but it is important that people use the microphone to the best of their ability Thank you. Okay. Representative Surf, if you can put your hand down, we are going to move to the next item. We are on to item 1080, the education budget, which is on page 166. Okay. Thank you. The RTM Education Committee met on Tuesday, April 25th, 2003, at 6 p.m., and it is in 555 in a classroom. Uh, we, the meeting was called to order at 6.13 p.m. Uh, roll call, Representatives Chase, Gibson, Gustafson, McElroy, and Whitney present. Representative Frickman and VZ Williams absent. We had quorum with four of seven members present. Also in attendance, Superintendent Austin, Board of Education Chair Watson, other Groton Public School administrators and staff and Board of Education members. For our new business, the first item was 3.1, so this is 2023-263 um, RTM Education Committee Review FYE 2024 Proposed Town Budget. The account 1080 Education, that's on page 167, but we also have the Board of Education book for that. Original motion made by Representative Gustafson to recommend $81,510,627 for account 1080. That was seconded by Representative Whitney. The rationale for this motion, this is the amount passed by the town council. We had a first amended motion by Representative Chase to recommend uh, $79,157,271. That was seconded by Representative Gibbs. The rationale, this is the amount passed last year. It would reduce the overall town budget and help taxpayers. The first amended motion failed. Two in favor, three opposed, and no abstentions. Mm -hmm. Representatives Chase and Gibson in favor. Representatives Gustafson, McElroy, and Whitney opposed. The original motion passed. Three in favor, two opposed, and no abstentions. Representatives Gustafson, McElroy, and Whitney in favor. Representatives Chase and Gibson opposed. The discussion covered a wide range of questions and comments from the committee members and answers and information from the superintendent, Groton Public School staff, and Board of Education members. Topics included increases in the transportation budget, minimum budget requirements, alliance districts, which the town will remain in for at least the next five years, funding sources, including federal impact aid, Department of Defense, or DOD, supplemental funds, and ARP ESSER funds. I had it as ARC ESSER, but it's ARP ESSER funds. Uh, reduction of four uh, full-time equivalent, or FTE, positions at Fitch, and um, incorporation of ARP ESSER funded positions into the regular budget. Uh, contractual salary and benefit increases, health reserve funds, and other topics were discussed. So I will move the committee recommended, recommended number for account 1080 education, 81,510,627. Second. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Motion made by Chair Whitney, seconded by Representative Kopp. Um, we do have Board of Ed Chair Kim Shepherdson-Watson here, as well as Superintendent Susan Austin, as well as 
whole lot of other people. Um, I will let you guys come on up. Um, Representative Amboise, we are going to get a really short um, presentation from the Board of Ed, and then um, we will move with questions. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Make sure that I speak into the mic. Um, so good evening. My name is um, Kim Shepherdson Watson, and I um, have the honor and privilege of being the chairperson of the Groton Board of Education. Um, on my left is the superintendent, Susan Austin, and ah, uh, oh, my goodness. On my left is Superintendent Austin, and on my right is Sam Kilpatrick, who is the director of, of Grounds. We have Clint Kennedy in the back, and he is the director of our technology services. And we also have our assistant superintendent, Phil Piazza, um, here as well. And we also have um, a group of incredible, dedicated people who are sitting in our back who represent um, our district staff, both um, our teachers and support staff. Um, so I thank them very much. And we also have, an, I think, an administrator here as well. Um, so I uh, would like to, to recognize them. I also have, um, we also have a few of our board members. I know that um, uh, Rita Volkman, and I also know that Jay um, Wheatloff is on as well um, as board of education members. Um, I would like to say first thank you to uh, Chairperson Mike Whitney for um, hosting uh, us in a meeting and a great discussion um, about the Board of Education meeting. Um, and uh, as I'm going into this um, PowerPoint, I do have to sort of speak to Monday's Board of Ed meeting. Um, I don't know um, how much people um, pay attention to uh, really the politics around this reading program in, um, throughout the country, um, but in, in April, um, excuse me, in March, we, were, uh, we had several parents come to us and talk to us um, with their concerns about um, our K through three reading program. Um, obviously through, not obviously, but through the pandemic, uh, people have been really concerned about the lag in scores um, across the nation um, because of, of, of how we were needing to teach um, our students and keep both our students, our families, and staff safe. Um, the board and I were completely moved by um, the dedication um, and enthusiasm that teachers and our literacy specialists came in to talk about with full knowledge um, of all the reading programs that uh, exist for our students um, in the K through three program. Um, I, I, I'm gonna take Rita Volkman's um, a comment around the fact that she was just so excited that as a board member to realize that our five elementary schools are all doing the same approaches for our K through three. Um, and this is um, largely because we have a, a town who supports our budget, supports our, um, supports our board, um, and that can, then can support our um, central office staff to then give what our teachers need to do the job and to do their craft that they're doing. So I just, um, it was an incredible moving um, meeting. It was really very inspirational and it really, really made me um, proud um, to, to be able to work so hard for the district. Um, also, as I go into this, I just want to let you know in our April um, regular board meeting, our director of finance, who I also believe is on board uh, on Zoom, uh, gave us our object code summary. And to that date, um, what we have left is $34,000. And that was from a, so for those people who might believe that we fluff a budget, um, to say that we are in April and we are working with a 34 um, in surplus is, uh, is a, is a pretty good thing. Let's move on. Um, as always, we have a, a mission statement, which is of teaching and learning. I would love for you to pay attention to those um, incredible, if you can see, maybe not. It's a good seal. <laughs> I think there's the battery problem. <laughs> can, is there a way to forward this? Uh, the clip. Thank you, Sean. 
but we have a we are um, we have the mission statement, which is of teaching and learning. We, um, our goal is to provide dynamic, rigorous curriculum to ensure effective and engaging instruction, to embrace excellent learning environments. Um, and we have the belief statement of cultivate an environment of diversity, equity, and inclusiveness. Um, our next some slides are, I don't know if they can get changed, but we just, um, we wanna highlight what our program highlights are. Um, and I just talked about our K through three um, reading program. We have um, increased rigor and relevance with our math instruction, um, and it goes with our Connecticut core standards. We have amplified our curriculum K through 12, which meets the needs of and the standards of the next generation science. Um, and we've continued um, to uh, expand our um, international baccalaureate program. Um, which is currently at the high school um, and uh, Groton Middle School. And oh, by the way, that was the support of the town to make sure that we have a campus for our Fitch High School and our middle school. Um, and through that, we have the, in our IB, we have the middle years program, we have a diploma program, um, and careers program and pathways. Um, we have continued to explore partnerships with Grasso Tech. Um, so that we can have more after-school opportunities for both our students and also for our students, um, for Grasso Tech students to um, get some of the good stuff that we have at Fitch. Um, we have all of our elementary schools have um, ha our magnet, um, and that was in the completion of our new buildings, um, and that was also um, part of the reason to do the magnet schools was also to meet the criteria for the Connecticut, um, Connecticut Department of State Education for our equity and diversity, um, and that we also um, have continued to do our curricular and extracurricular activities. Um, and we have this one-to-one -one um, computer initiative uh, that gets supported in this budget. Um, and we uh, provide a secondary transition for students who are 18 to 22, and that's under our IDEA um, grant. Uh, and we have our Treehouse, which has both um, an after-school before and after-school and summer program. And that through the, through the town, we have um, our um, uh, our police officers that uh, work with our uh, staff um, in our, our buildings of the Groton Middle School and our um, uh, high school. So when we take a look at um, our town revenues, um, we, uh, th there's that pie, cha pie chart that we just always love to show, um, and it kind of shows where some of the different things come from uh, in terms of helping to support our budget Yep, uh, 50, 50 million has come from the town. We have the educational cost sharing, which is about 30%. Um, we have the federal impact aid, which is 5% 5, 5 um, and down the road. So, but you can see the larger proportion of, of our budget does, does come from the town revenues. What I have come to understand and know about um, uh, Board of Ed budgets is, is that there's just certain categories that we have. And so when you take a look at um, what our Groton Public Schools budget category is, you can see the largest part of our pile is our treasured um, gifts, and that is our staff. Um, and that is what helps um, and just uh, provides this excellent uh, educational experience in this district. Um, and uh, and so that's 68% of his, his salaries and benefits. Um, and you can see 76.8% is salary and benefits. Yep, sorry, I, I don't know how to speak. Um, and so that, once again, um, just trying to put in line um, for, uh, to help us sort of do our, um, to do our um, budget. So the next slide that I'm gonna show you is um, when we, our budget process, for those who don't know, um, is by charter, we have to um, have a budget that goes to the town manager by February 28th. Um, January, starting the first uh, Monday in January, the Board of Education works uh, with the superintendent um, on her budget um, and uh, look for ways of, of, of enhancing the budget or um, asking what, what does she really need in order to do that and asking for her to take a look at what she has proposed. 
Um, and Susan actually starts her budget um, in late summer, um, early fall, um, to make sure that we can get it in January. Um, and so just to let you know, the on this slide it really shows um, that the, 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 our budget has to have these um, criteria, which is salaries, benefits, purchase services, transportation, supplies, and equipment. Um, as I don't know if you can see, but on the top, uh, her budget came in at a 4.98. Um, and with our, with our working um, together, um, we were able to um, kind of come down and our budget is representing um, from last year's is a 2.97% increase um, from, from, uh, from last year, but we were able to bring the budget down from the 4.98. 4 um, and uh, some of the drivers for that is probably something that's pretty similar for many people um, and many budgets is we are hit, being hit by inflation. We, um, we were locked in with our, our fuel, but in some of the ways we were not. And so we've had inflation has hit that. We've also um, were able to negotiate a new bus contract for five years. Um, and. W Three to five. With a, a th uh, th the last two years um, is a, if if that's what uh, if it, it meets the needs of both of them, uh, <laughs> both of us and the um, current bus company. Um, but that was an increase. We are currently in negotiations with our paraprofessionals um, and um, working. And once again, we're just starting that, um, so I don't really have anything that I can report on. Um, but I also just want the town to know that. Um, it both benefits the, the union, but it also benefits the Groton Public Schools, is that we have moved from a three-year contract for most of our contracts to a four-year, um, and that is uh, to help with some cost savings for us. Um, this takes a look, or walks you through, um, sort of where you can see the percentages, and I'm just going to um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to necessarily walk you through because if you guys have questions, I, I'm going to make sure that Susan and, and Ken do that. I just wanted to, once again, give you the overlay of what, that, of what this is. Um, we, um, I am going to just uh, step back for one second. Can you go back to the adjusted um, budget for just a second? Ken Knight, I hope you're on because <laughs> um, I'm going to poorly attempt to explain um, our, the corridor. Um, the one of the ways that we got to the 2.97 um, is that we do have the corridor for our health insurance um, and we were able to take um, monies out. Um, we've been assured by both our Lori Lapine um, and, and so it's, it says the reduction in health insurance reserve. Um, we do, we did not bottom that out. Um, that had happened to us a couple or several years ago. Um, where we didn't have enough money and we had to come back to the town to ask us to help w us with that. Um, but um, we, did, we did get the budget down um, with using um, the, some of the reduction from that health insurance. Uh, I think. Um, yeah, so just, um, just to kind of, just continue to remind um, all of us is that uh, if you took a look at our seven-year average, we have only had an increase of 0.5%. Um, we've had several years where we um, have sustained um, a level zero uh, percent uh, budget. I do understand that um, this is uh, hard times for most people, but um, I think that the board and specifically for me, is that we feel that we are presenting a um, level service budget. It meets, we are, we are being good stewards of the money that has been, um, that we are using for the district. Once again, if I could remind you about my comment about our object code summary, and we were $34,000 um, for the rest of the year um, that has not been dedicated to something. Um, so I feel like we've been, uh, we've been working pretty hard on that. Um, and I know one of the things, um, do you want to just go to the capital? So I know that this is not the time, but I just, I wanted to touch on, uh, there's a, several things that the board put on that have, were zeroed out, um, and a lot of them had to do with the athletic fields, um, or the field house, um, and um, uh, there's other, there's another one, uh, 
there's a and bleachers, um, and I just what we um, we put them on because we do know that it's part of a the project of the fields committee in terms of their phases. Um, we just the board would just like to to help um, help the field committee and help the town move more towards a referendum um, for that, so that we can have uh, the attention that's necessary for those um, for those facilities. Uh, last year. Uh, the Board of Ed um, did pay for a study on the field house, so that is there. Um, and we have some rough numbers around for the bleachers. The other one that I would um, love to call us attention to is our culinary arts um, uh, room. Uh, that was also zeroed out. Um, we did have a study. Um, once again, we, uh, we did pay for that. Um, and that comes in roughly about $600,000. Um, and I um, did meet with um, the, the mayor um, to see if we could actually um, get some RTM, town council, and board of ed members to kind of take a look if there's a way that we could find funding um, so that we can make this happen. Because once again, we do have a lot of, um, we have had lots of co um, competitive grants. And one of the competitive grants that we have is our career, uh, career one. And our culinary arts program is a very, a uh, well sought out um, program and we just don't have a great room um, to do that and so we would love to see if we could move forward on that. Um, once again, thank you for your support. Um, the district is uh, excited about how much the, the town really um, embraces and understands the, uh, how um, amazing um, of, of, the, of the people who work in the district um, and how much they make us rot and proud. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, um, if we can take this off, then I can see everybody, and then we can open up the floor for discussion. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, Moderator Russ, were you recognizing me? Um, not quite yet, but you are first on the list, so go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. Under provisions of the town charter, three. Point five point three and the RTM rules 8.1. I'm declaring that uh, my wonderful wife and uh, mother of two uh, is a employee of the Groton Board of Education. And I fully support this budget on the floor. I'd like to thank uh, Chairwoman Watson for her service to the community as well. And with that, I yield. Thank you. Um, Representative Casper. Thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. Um, <clears throat> I note that the budget is increasing by over about 2.4 million from last year. And I also note that the town of Groton's portion is 57%. Um, but of the increase in the budget, we're paying 2.3 or approximately 96% of the increase falls on the taxpayers of Groton, not to the state or federal or any grass. Can someone talk to that? One of the things that we have really um, been working very hard is one of the things we do really well and we work really hard at is making sure that our parents sign up for impact aid. That's one of our revenue sources. So we try to get as much that that funding source is up over $4 million. There were years in about 10 years that we were estimating it to be like 3 million, but it was coming in at four or more percent. So there have been monies that have come to the district additionally in the sense of revenue. Um, so, you know, the revenue kind of stays pretty pretty stationary. The 25 million that we've been receiving from the state, um, because we're an alliance district, and we will be for the next five years, that also is secure for us, which is a good thing. Um, there are many districts that have lost funding. Um, so, you know, it is something that we're always considering and making sure that we are receiving as much revenue as possible. 
We also go after a lot of um, competitive and categorical grants that add and supplement our budget. And uh, much of that is done for professional development. As far as the, um, the portion that the, um, that the taxpayers are responsible for, it is a $30 million, $50 million split. So you, the townspeople do pay more than the revenue source coming in. I see Ken Knight, and he has done some work and actually had done a chart at one time. So Ken, if you can get on to talk about what is really the increased responsibility for the taxpayer. Sure, hi, uh, this, is, uh, this is Ken Knight, business manager for the Board of Ed. Um, uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, yes, very well. Okay, good, all right, very good, thank you. Um, so yeah, we, we did do an analysis of the increase of who the, uh, to the, t the town taxpayers uh, based upon this 2.97% increase that we're talking about. And uh, we're calculating that it's an increase of 4.8% uh, in what the uh, taxpayers um, uh, would, would, would pay. Uh, that is uh, dependent upon the, uh, the revenues coming in at what we estimated. Uh, in, we have historically been, we, we, we somewhat uh, underestimate, uh, for instance, the uh, impact aid uh, uh, amount we estimated for this year at 4.1 million and so far through, uh, through yesterday, we had gotten 4.2 million. So um, there are opportunities uh, for uh, reducing uh, the amount that the taxpayers have to, have to pay. Representative Eben. Thank you. Um, I just have a point of information, which is that Representative Thomas left the meeting at 750 and did not vote in the last CIP. Thank you. You wanted me to, uh, Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I'd like to move another number. Okay. 79,157,000. $271, which I believe is last year's number. Second, um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the number, please? Se $79,157,271. Thank you. Okay, that motion was made by Representative Scott, seconded by Representative Adams. Could you please speak to, or do you want to speak to your motion? I do. I'm, I'm just looking at all of the numbers and being thoughtful of the tax burden that's being borne by the homeowners, uh, this is this is not a budget year like last year where um, we can rely on the businesses to help cover our tax burdens. It's, it's gonna be burdened by people who own homes, condos, people who own cars um, here in the town of Groton. In two years time, the budget has gone up um, over, five, over $4 million. Um, it went up 1.7 million in last year and this year it's going up 2.3. I think it's important to remember that this is a budget that can never be cut. Um, so if we approve the $81 million budget tonight, next year it's at least $81 million and whatever they increase it next year, it's gonna be that number. It just never, it never can go down. Um, I, I feel um, that uh, this is not the year for a large increase um, and that a $79 million number, which is last year's number is an appropriate thing to do. And I'll reserve uh, for additional comments later, thank you. Representative Norman. Hi. Um, you know, as as a homeowner, if that's where the burden's going to be, I, I say I, I do not support this new number. I I look with dismay every year over year at our increasing gap in expenditure per pupil um, between the state average and what is happening in Groton. As a homeowner who we are going to see all of these new jobs coming into our town over the next five to 10 years. I want people to choose to live here and why they would choose to live here is that we are investing in our future and our students and our children. And so to do that, we need to actually fund our schools. People are not going to choose to live here. My home values will not continue to increase if we don't actually have good schools. Home values are incredibly tied to good schools, right? My same home in Old Saybrook or Old Lyme would be worth a lot more because they invest in their schools. And I think we need to do the same. Thank you. Representative Massett. You're muted. Okay. Um, 
just a point of clarification, possibly from Superintendent Austin, to say that um, once the budget is at a certain number, it will never go down. There are scenarios where you can reduce the budget. I think it has to do with the number of students. Yes, that's correct. So okay, can you speak you. to that? Could you speak to that, please? Well, yes, that, that could vary depending on the number of students. And I work very closely with the legislators, our local legislators, and try to keep up with all the current legislation. You also need to know that a lot of the drivers of a budget have to do with what we call unfunded mandates. For instance, the reading legislation mandated that we purchase a basal program, one of six, that about 150 districts out of the 169 refused to purchase because they aren't good. And that would cost the state about $600, $750 million to do something like that. Every district would be paying $600,000 just to fill the classroom with something that is not worthy of our children, <laughs> that our children deserve better. So that's just one, for instance, of an unfunded mandate. There are many, many more. So we're constantly, and CABE, our Board of Ed is very astute. They belong to an organization of Connecticut Association of Boards, and they really keep up with the legislation that's coming through because oftentimes, while they, it might be well-meaning and there's good intentions, and we certainly want all kids to read, that's kind of what's behind the legislation, um, hence all the work that my teachers and my literacy specialists have been doing, but these mandates then cause towns to have to pay additional funds for things that they might not need or want. So we are trying to be very present to that kind of work. Um, and I, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I work with um, CAPS, the Connecticut Association of School Superintendents. I meet with the regional ones on a monthly basis and we constantly have people from the state of Connecticut and legislators who come and kind of give us a briefing on what is going through. And we're trying to pay as close attention so we safeguard our community from having to spend money on something that wouldn't be needed. So I just have that to say. Thank you. Representative Surf. Representative Surf. May I unmute? Yes. Um, um, first of all, Chairperson Watson, I want to uh, thank you for speak. I think you're speaking rather close to your mic, right? So that we can hear you. And you're the only I was. person on the <laughs> yeah. You're the only person on the floor so far that I have heard clearly. So if everyone else, if you could speak close to your microphones, it would give us here online a better chance. Now I I have two questions. One is about the Northeast Academy, which I is a fairly new school, and I don't know. I might not have heard you because the, the acoustics are not great today, but. Why, why suddenly do we have a, a million dollar problem with air quality? And my second question is, given that you received um, an awful lot of the ARPA funding to pay people extra and to do extra things um, with your, uh, in the schools um, this, um, this year, would it really not be possible for us to have a zero level budget increase because I, I am with, with Representative Scott here. Um, the, because we did not have a phase in of the revaluation last year, which we should have done, the residents of the town are taking at least a 10 or 20% bigger hit and having to pay the taxes. And so we don't, we're not getting any help from business. And the taxes already, in addition to the property revaluation, have been really killing a lot of people. I. I hear that from all my constituents. They're ready to move out. They don't know what to do. And so though I know you're doing a fantastic job in the schools, I'm really hoping that maybe in this particular case, you could help us out and try to keep the budget at a zero level increase. 
So thank you. Uh, before we move forward, Representative Surf, the um, Northeast Academy Air Quality is a CIP, so it does not fall directly under this budget, so it's inappropriate at this time. Um, it is a zero budget or zero line item this year, correct? Um, so it won't even be discussed tonight. Um, if you want to address the other question. So thank you for that question. I'd like to say that um, it is a process, and when we first roll out a budget, this was really a, a budget that was very similar to last year. There weren't additions, but there are expenses when it comes to contractual agreements that we make with the people who are really what we give our kids in school today. Their teachers, their paraprofessionals, the custodians, the secretaries, all those good people who work with our children every day in a central office that supports them. So it really is, um, you know, kind of a flat budget in that way, but expenses have gone up, contracts have gone up. Um, to come in with a personnel um, upgrade of 2.4% is very reasonable in this day and age when you hear some contracts going up much more than that during inflationary times. To, to look at um, things like electricity and heat, I know that I, I felt it even in my small home the increases. So those increases are things that we're sustaining in the schools and we have to pay for. We can't shut off the heat. So those things that we've rolled out are things we absolutely need. Um, and I would say that our board was due diligent in going through line by line by line every single thing that they could possibly do. So we do have through our contracts, our teacher contracts, through our board um, really um, ideal number of students from 20 to 24. Some classrooms can't take more than 24. That's what we were looking at, class size too, and the number of FTEs we would need or number of teachers we would need. If you cut 2.2 million dollars from this budget, there would be class sizes of 30 to 40, and they, we just couldn't fit the kids into the classrooms without the teachers. So. We do need our teachers, we do need our paraprofessionals. We have um, our children in special ed have um, a legally binding document called an IEP, Individualized Education Plan, that has a paraprofessional oftentimes in that plan to help support that child, access the curriculum. So there are many things by law I need to include in my budget and that's what I've done. And um, the board. Yes, could you answer the question about the Northeast Academy? No, ma'am. Air quality problem? Representative Surf, that is not part of this budget. It is a CIP that is actually zeroed out this year. So the you, air quality. I thought you it, had it on one of your slides. Didn't you have it on your slide? It was zero for it's now. Zero. Right. We've been able to fix that problem at this point, but we are keeping our eye open. To make and working on that on a regular basis. The Northeast Academy was actually built on wetlands, so there is some, you know, we have to keep on top of that. Well, thank you for being honest about that. Most people don't want to admit that we're building on wetlands all the time, so I appreciate your clarity there. But it's really not a good idea in the future. Representative, thank Sir? you. Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I've got a couple of questions. Um, the first question I have, that, you know, I saw in the presentation, um, you, uh, I think it was in your uh, uh, talking about your 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 value system, you talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Can you? Um, dive into that a little bit deeper and, and tell me if there's any costs associated with having uh, that kind of program in your school? Um, the board had, um, when they adopted that vision statement, they actually set aside in the operation budget um, $15,000 and it includes um, a coordinator, it includes um, books that staff are reading, um, it includes um, you know, just really very few things, but um, mostly um, we do do some professional learning so that we can be culturally responsive in the classroom. We do have a very diverse community, as you know. 51% of my students are free and reduced lunch. 
51% of my students are children of color. Um, we have a lot of students who are EL, English language learners. Um, so we really want to make sure that everybody feels a sense of belonging. Okay. Representative. Thank you for that. Um, do, you have, do you keep a running tally of the cost of the unfunded mandates that are forced upon you by the legislature and how that impacts our budget? I should. I, I actually, we, we actually do review some of those on a, on a yearly basis. There's so many right now, Representative Scott, that it's really been hard to keep up with. That's actually one of the meetings I'm gonna go to on Friday. So we, we try very hard and our local representatives are very good about keeping me abreast of those two. Okay, I, you know, I, I think that would be helpful. You know, having served in the legislature myself, I fought against unfunded mandates. Um, and I'd like to, I would love to know what the impact is uh, that we're bearing as taxpayers here in the town of Groton. So if you could generate a list um, and uh, you know, associated costs, I think that would be helpful for future budget discussions. Thank you, um, I will, my I, last I will question, do that. I, thank you. Um, my last question, uh, you, you have to have had anticipated that someone was gonna motion last year's number. It happens every year. Um, do you have a, um, a spreadsheet of uh, kind of like what happens if somebody makes a motion for last year's number? I would say that our board was so due diligent, we went through every possibility and it's already been done. So, I mean, the, the only thing that, the only thing that, I'm sorry. Uh, that wasn't answering. Okay. Okay. Not that really answering my is. question though. I mean, I, I know you guys did a lot of work to figure out the number you got now, but like, you know, is there a what if? You know, like well, what if somebody motioned last year's number, what's the impact? Do you have a list of what the impact is? The impact is 75% of my budget is the people who serve the children. And, you know, supplies are down. I mean, even though the cost of supplies are up, our, our site budgets are only 1% additional, even though the rate of inflation, it, it costs much more to buy paper, pencils, crayons, but we'll have to buy less of that. So we've already tackled all those things that are tangible. So now it's really the people that would be affected. And I do not want that to happen. Okay. Um, so the answer is really that you don't have a, a, a document or anything um, at this point to tell us if we pass that number tonight, what, what specifically would be the impact of the board event? No, we've already made that document. I think we showcased that, what the board did in the process to get it down from what I called a level budget in the rollout under 5%. So we've cut back, we've even used as much of the health savings account as we could possibly use. Okay. Um, if, you, if we were to ask you to put together a statement like that, how long would it take you to do it? I, I wouldn't venture to guess. I don't know. I, I feel like that's a piece of information that we should have before we vote on any of these numbers tonight. I'm inclined to move to set this aside to the next meeting until we can have a better answer to that question. Uh, matter of fact, I'll, uh, absent um, that information, I think I will make that motion to set this aside for the next meeting to see if we can get a better impact statement. Is there a second? Bailey, second. Um, Representative Massip. Um, <laughs> it sounds to me as though the question that Representative Scott just asked has been answered. And if what I heard was that it would impact the level of staffing, which would impact the teaching of our students. If I am misreading that, please feel free, correct me. That's exactly the point. It, 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 the impact could not be sustained. Representative Gustafson. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Representative I'm Gustafson? Sorry. I'm sorry, we're not hearing you. Um, a little better, but if you could speak really, really loudly into your microphone, because we're not hearing you well. Could it be this microphone? Okay. No, I was going to agree with uh, Representative Massett. I believe the superintendent spoke earlier that, you know, cutting that funding would increase class size to a, a not very good level. I mean, you don't want, you know, it's hard to teach and learn if you have a class size over a certain number, you know, 24 or so. Um, isn't that correct? That's correct, and there are contracts that would not allow that to happen. Right. And there's, you know, the board has really recognized the, the right solution in the, in the right class size. And our classrooms, even though we have new schools, and even our new wing of Fitch, it doesn't hold more than 24. There's state legislation that says no more than 24 in any of the science classes, for instance. So we just can't do it. And we wouldn't want to do it. Representative Cox. Uh, yes, thanks. Thanks for coming out here tonight. Um, if it were up to me, which I can't do, I would double this budget. Um, I very much support the education of our children. It's getting better and better in this town. I think we, you've done a wonderful job. I, my hat is off to every teacher and administrator. And I, I understand that we all have a right to ask questions, and we should be totally respectful of that, but I do believe that ha the question has been asked and answered uh, by the superintendent, um, and I think we need to think very carefully about where we do cut in here because there are some very large um, parts of this budget where if we look at on an average FTE salary, the education does not come anywhere near some of our other items in this budget. I have specifics to that, but I don't think I'll need to speak to them right now. So I support this full, the second, n not the number, the 79, and not setting aside. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, thought I was on mute. Uh, um, I'm hearing kind of generalities. We're going to have to cut teachers. How many we don't know? We're going to have to have how many children in the classroom? Maybe 50, maybe 40. I'm not hearing specifics. And that's why I'm asking for more details. You know, how many how many teachers really are going to get cut? How many children are really, if we do this, how many children have, are going to be in a classroom? I, I want to see the specifics. I'm, I'm, I think I'm entitled to see that. That's why I've asked for this. So I'll tell you that $2.2 million divided by the average class, the average teacher's salary of $64,000, we can do the math and figure out how many and how that would generate class sizes that would increase above any contractual agreement, any um, ethical decision for our children. Point of, inform oh. Oh. Point of information, point of that would be 34 teachers. Was that heard? It would be 34 teachers, according to Representative Norman. Yes. Yeah. Representative Gauthier? Uh, I'm sorry, what was oh, that I'm number sorry. again? We didn't hear it. She said 34 teachers. Representative Gauthier. Thank you. So, looking at the, I think this helps add some context into the $81.5 million budget. If we look at the financing plan from the general fund, roughly a little bit more than half of that is actually coming out of the general fund itself. The rest is paid for by federal funds. Um, I'm seeing a huge amount coming from a special education fund. Is, is my understanding what I'm looking at correct, um, Superintendent? Yes. Yes. So out of the general fund, out of the taxpayer direct, like Groton taxpayer dollars, looks like approximately 46.7 million is really what we're talking about. Um, so a big number up on the board understand there's other money besides what's coming into the general fund and we're not a revenue body but understanding that while we're approving 81.5 that's not necessarily 81.5 out of the general fund because we have to use we have to pretty much approve pass-throughs of all of this other education funding I mean it's not going to be spent anywhere else in this budget the federal funds that the school district receives from like I said from the federal government from the state that's more of a pass through, but it all, you know, like the, I don't know how else to explain it. 46.7 is what the town is contributing to this budget. 
essentially. The rest is coming to the town and then being specifically allocated for a specific function and could not be used anywhere else. That's just my point for fellow committee members to consider. Um, Representative Whitney. Thank you. Uh, just some higher level numbers first on the uh, page one of our budget. That's the town manager's letter. It divides our the whole budget into six categories. And if you look at those, that, those numbers, uh, there's six categories. Contingency is flat, so that's 0%. The, the next lowest is education services, 3%. Then um, we could look at, um, after that, capital debt services, 4.6%. Um, let's see, subdivisions, that includes uh, City of Groton, Groton Long Point, 5.1% uh, uh, increase. Other agencies, 6.4%. Town operations, 7.2%. So education, in terms of the increase, is uh, percent Madam increase. moderator, point of order, please. What's your point of order? What's um, your with all due respect, the uh, motion on the floor right now is to set aside this to the to get this information. I, I realize all these numbers are significant, but we need to focus on this motion first, and then we can go back to the main motion and the I amended, please. Can you hold that until we get through this? Because I think, I think the point is that there's a lot of other budgets that have much higher percentage increase. Am I correct, Chair Whitney? Yeah, actually, um, uh, a point of information. Uh, can you explain the procedure right now? Because we had that 841, the move to set aside. I figured we were in that 10-minute uh, so window to continue, but maybe not. Actually, the 10-minute window I did look up, it is, yeah. it is um, if we make a motion to... Um, to move the motion. If we move the motion, the chair, meaning the moderator, may um, allow for 10 minutes. It doesn't say must. So there was an error last meeting. Um, we did allow for the 10 minutes, but we don't have to. That, that's um, after we approve that motion or not? I don't know. So could you explain where we are right now for seizure? Right now, the yeah. number or the, the, motion the, the motion on the floor, thank you, is to set aside this, this till Monday. So, okay, if okay. we, and then we will move up to the numbers. So okay. right now we are discussing if we should set this aside till Monday. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just just be brief. I don't think we should set it aside. Uh, the level of information it's quite clear with uh, uh, t uh, not raising it by the anticipated 2.3 million dollars, which I include in my numbers. Um, that would be a cut to. Uh, a significant uh, reduction in the planned amount of, um, of people and services. And so, as you've heard, it's, it's in the double digits for, for teachers and staff. Uh, and we've not required this level of information for any other agency where we were zeroing it out. Mm, um, I, I think that was asked maybe of public safety. And they said simply that would mean um, officers. And here we're saying simply it would be mean teachers. And so that's enough information, uh, certainly, for, for me to move forward with. Thank you. Representative Amboise, do you have something on the motion on the floor to set aside till Monday? Yes, Madam Moderator, I'm not in support of setting this aside. I believe that the Board of Education and the superintendent have provided ample information for us to continue forward. Uh, Jobs will be lost, services will suffer, students will be loaded in classrooms, and I cannot support that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so seeing no other hands up. Oh, Representative Chase. I thought you said you didn't want to speak to this one. I don't want to talk about the set aside. Then let's vote, do that vote first. Okay. Do you want to do that? If, you're, if you are not discussing this, let's do this vote, and then we'll move, right. okay? Um, okay, all those, so we are voting on setting this aside till Monday, which is, I don't know what the date is Monday, because we can't do that. that the Board of Ed would not be available on, on Monday. Monday. Okay, so do we want to move it to our next meeting, which would be Thursday, 18th. the 18th? Well, that's the other option. Yeah. 
Okay, so the motion was to set it aside. He, Representative Scott did not say Monday. Representative Scott, are you okay with motion, um, setting aside it until Thursday the 18th when the Board of Ed could be here? That is fine, I am. And Representative Bailey, are you okay with that friendly amendment to that motion? Uh, yes, Madam Moderator, thank you. So, you're not looking. It's ridiculous. We got all that other stuff to do. Okay. Let's just do so, we are voting on whether or not we are going to set this aside until Thursday the 18th. All those in favor of setting this aside until Thursday the 18th, please raise your hand. We have Representative Dean Shinbrot. He's going to want to write these down. Representative Dean Shinbrot, Representative Scott, Representative Bailey, and Representative Surf. Okay, if you can put your hands down, please. If you are opposed to setting this aside until Thursday the 18th, please raise your hand. Okay, if you can put your hands down, please. Okay, if you are abstaining, Representative Gauthier. So that motion fails. Four, two, can someone do the quick math? Four to 20. Six to one. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you for giving me easy math, people. It's been a long time. Okay. Are there any comments or questions before we move on? Seventy-nine million one hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-one. Representative Sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to put another number on, but maybe we can do that after the vote on this number. Okay, I have Representative but, Chase who had her hand up. Thank you, Madam. Would you remember that I want if this vote fails, yes. I'd like to put another number on the board. Yes. <laughs> Representative Chase. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, we're in the Alliance District for the next 10 years. You, I think you, I heard you say at one of the meetings, correct? We're for five years guaranteed, but then if they graduate you, you're um, held harmless for the next five years. Okay, so is it also a fact that as long as we're in Alliance District, we cannot reduce the budget. Well, dependent on um, if dependent on our number of students. If we, for instance, didn't have the Columbia class submarine coming in, which will probably make us a larger district, or if we reduce numbers, that could impact it. So even if we're in Alliance District, we could reduce the budget if we if the student ratio. I'd have to I'd have to double check on that for sure. Okay, from what I've heard over the years, that it, you cannot reduce it. There is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So another perspective on this: if this budget goes up two million dollars every year for the next ten years, that we're in the Alliance District, we're at a hundred million for this budget, um, and and I, I I really don't think that's sustainable. Number I don't one. think that's been proposed at all. I'm just proposing this year's budget. I do one budget. I know, year but at it time. went up 1.7 this year, 2. Point whatever next year. No, it went up 2.22 percent this year, and it's going up almost 3 percent ne for After next year. After about four zeros in a row, two zeros, a little bit, and then two more zeros and a negative 34. I'm just this. saying this, the taxpayers can't sustain this constant going up. Anyway, neither here nor there. Um, Another perspective is they were talking last night, and I know it's very preliminary, very beginning of the talks, but they were talking about repurposing the community center. You just lost I've, your mic. Okay, go ahead, sorry. You're better. Refurbishing the community center for $45 million. Um, we're still paying for the schools that we've seen no savings on that were promised to the taxpayers, how are we going to fix up the rest of this town and maintain the rest of this town when we have all these expenses that keep coming up? It's a rhetorical question, but it's something to, something to think about. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else before we vote on, oh, Representative Whitney. Thank you. Um, I was out of order before on those numbers, but the, the point is that in the six main budget categories, education is a 3% increase. For instance, town operations, 7.2. And I know education is a large budget number in terms of dollars for sure, um, but the increase for town operations is two point, based over 2.8 million, where we're considering hopefully a 2.3 million increase. So both in terms of dollars and percent, the town operations budget is going up quite a bit more than uh, the education services. Um, so I think, you know, it's unrealistic really to expect uh, in the current economy um, and all the realities of having to be able to educate students and uh, have people employed to do so uh, to have a 0% increase. Um, I'd run the numbers uh, somewhat similar to what Chair Watson uh, presented. Um, and I just did it based on what's on page 167, the bar chart in our budget book, because they have numbers back from fis uh, a fiscal year uh, 2018, and then it goes up. It's level, level, and then it uh, goes up and level for three years, and it's, it goes up last year. And then if we approve the, the first number, which I fully support, it'd go up again. Uh, so that's just through that, if you average that out, that's a 1.1% increase per year. But of course, it's not average. We, we zero for a while, it goes up, and it plateaus again. And, and basically what happens is it goes up because we're, we're playing catch up, right? Uh, where uh, the costs are, are going up too high, and then we have to be, be we're behind the curve. Here, I don't even know if 3% honestly is keeping with the curve. Um, so I, I do not support the zero. Uh, I support the original number uh, for sure. Um, I did have a question uh, for, I guess, either Chair Watson or the superintendent about um, the uh, reduction of four uh, full-time equivalent positions at FIC, Fitch and incorporation of ARP ASSER funded positions into the regular budget. We discussed that at the meeting. My notes were sort of incomplete on that. I just want to know uh, which, which positions uh, are being reduced at Fitch, and, and I think I know how, but you could comment on that. Uh, and then which ARP ASSER positions are being brought into the regular budget and what schools they're at. So when you have a retirement, um, and you, 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 a top step teacher does retire. We often replace it with a, with a staff member, a new teacher, you know, at a much lower cost, sometimes within their first five years, depending on what the certification needs are. In this budget, we um, have retirement. Um, at first, it was like 12, and I think we're up to 16. So four of those retirements um, at the high school, we were not going to replace. We had four other positions in our ESSER, and our, one of our student board members said that this is, you know, we don't want to wait for the cliff, so those are four positions that we really do need to continue. Two of them are district positions and two are middle school. So really in the retirement, they were some of the core areas, ELA, social studies, math, and science, but replaced by others, science, STEM, um, math, and a social worker. So, but it just, in a different school that needed it. So, um, but we used, those people were hired during our ESSER because of the amount of students that we had and the needs that we had. The social workers specifically, um, we have a social worker now in each of our schools or one that shares a couple schools. So with the social emotional needs of our kids um, and our families, their needs, social workers help families and they help children. So that was really a necessity, and that will be ongoing. There are other positions in our pastor that we won't be continuing, but those four we thought we really wanted to make sure we had covered. And, and so those four positions from our pastor, two social workers, are those the district? They're, yeah, well, they're in schools, but they're across the district. Right, mm -hmm. and then the, the two middle school? I'm and sorry science, STEM, a so, science and a STEM middle school. Okay. And then for Fitch, sorry. I, so, uh, the, so the ELA, retirements math, were science. specifically, I think at Fitch, there might have been one at the middle school, and the ARP ESSER replacements were um, across the district and at the middle school. But, but for Fitch, it was ELA, math, science, and for social, social studies. studies? Yep. And one of them may have been at the middle school? Or, or one of them may have been the middle school. It might have been, yeah. It's, so 
uh, with a, a teacher less in ELA, math, science, and maybe social studies, what, what effect does that have on class size, course offerings, and so what's the strategy? We really, we've really worked hard. We've had a, um, a, a scheduler through PowerSchool, um, a consultant working with us on our, on our schedules. We really um, did a survey with our staff looking for some ideas um, to really make the schedules better. Um, and in some classes, you know, depending on the classes, we typically will have between 20, 24 at the middle school, but at the high school we were seeing numbers like 14 to 22. So we were able to redo these schedules and balance them better so that you would have in a high school, in a middle school between 20 and 24 students. There are specialized classes like special education, um, the culinary arts because the, you know, the facility is the way it is and needs refurbishing, we can only get 16 you know, on each side, and there are hundreds of kids that get turned away from culinary because of that. So, you know, there are different specialty areas that might have fewer than that, but if you look at most of the core instruction and some of the, um, you know, enrichment or the um, electives, they typically are between 20 and 24, and with this new scheduling, we're really balancing it better. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll just close my comments by saying that, um, you know, education, a good quality public education is really one of the fundamental pillars of a free democratic society. And uh, we have a responsibility to our town and uh, the, the children being brought up in it to uh, fund this well. And same thing goes for um, our educators. If we want high quality education, if we want uh, students to graduate and be well trained, well educated, to take some of the jobs that are um, growing in town, then we need to support our educators. And one way to support them is by thanking them. Thank you for coming out. Uh, another way to support them is to uh, pay them uh, somewhat to the level of the, what their jobs really entail and what they deserve. I don't think we're close to that nationally, um, but zeroing it out um, would, and, and cutting teachers would be a disservice to the town, its children, and the school system. Thank you. Representative Gar Gauthier. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, so I, I share the reservations about the Alliance District. It's a total catch-22, right? It's great that we're getting extra support to bring um, our district up to a better level for our students, but also once you graduate from that, that's a lot of funding lost. That's a lot of support lost. So it's that balancing act of um, wanting to do better and be better, um, but making sure we can sustain it once we get there. I 100% share reservations about the MBR being ra uh, raised, about, um, like I said, the Alliance District money going away, how are we going to recoup that? But let's remember that this budget isn't in a vacuum, right? Let's remember that as a parent myself with a preschooler, um, soon to be kindergartner, he starts kindergarten in the fall, I shopped around school districts. I looked at my options and really considered was Groton where I wanted to send my son and my son after that. I have friends doing the same exact thing from other districts that want to send their kids to Groton and they're trying to figure out how they can make that happen because they don't like the school district they're in. If we're talking about wanting to build multifamily houses, how are we going to get families with children here if they don't want to be in this school district? Right, it's an, I, I, hate, I, hate, to, I hate to play that, that card, right? But it's an economic development issue. We want money in here, we need families here. Families are going to spend the money at the restaurants, the shops, the daycares, they're not gonna come here if they don't like our schools. And if we're not investing in our schools, that's families walking away. We talk about that 80% of employees that work in Groton, they're taking their families somewhere else. Groton has to be comprehensively, like holistically ideal for new residents. And that includes an education that they can support and send their kids to because it's being funded, because we are treating our teachers well and we have quality teachers and the turnover and the burnout isn't killing them, right? I have friends that are educators, so I've heard it. My, my sister is a paraprofessional here in the school district. I've heard it. I have reservations about increasing this budget, but big picture, we want Groton to grow. We need families. That's just a population truth um, like across America. People are fighting for new bodies in the form of children. If you want the children to come, if you want the families here, you want their tax dollars, invest in your education because you get them for 12 years. You get them K through 12.
that's why I'm supporting this budget. Thank you. Um, Representative Scott, this is, I think, your second time on this topic. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I, I fully support um, this amended number. Um, you know, I heard some comments about, you know, we, we uh, don't cut the town manager's budget and went up a certain number. Um, I guess where I bristle on that commentary is we have more power over the other aspects of the town budget, where we're absolutely handcuffed with the minimum budget rule on this one. Uh, this is a budget that historically seems to go up a million and a half, two million, three million, back down to a million and a half a year. Historically, there is precedence. Um, uh, in the past, the RTM has uh, issued a 0% increase. Um, it has happened, it used to happen, I'm almost thinking, on every other year basis. Um, it's been a while uh, since the, we've done it. Um, and I think that helps us to control the growth of our budget. You know, people talk about we need good education to get people to come to the town of Groton. We also need low taxes to get people to come to the town of Groton. Um, and again, homeowners are bearing the burden uh, in this uh, budget cycle, and they will be for the, the near future because of the way homes were evaluated versus commercial property. Um, so I, I think it's a, a smart move, a responsible move um, to uh, use last year's number for this year's budget. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Casper. Thank you, uh, Madam Moderator. Um, as I look, I see there's a forecast of uh, the school population going up by 230. Um, if we take the 230 uh, new students and apply the average of 18,000 and change that Groton has been paying per student, the increase would come up to 4.2 million. And this budget is below that, so I have to commend you for that. And, I, I, and now we are lowering our average cost per student with this budget. Thank you. Representative Cerf. Um, yes. Um, I too believe in a, a, in a good education for children. I think it's so important. And in fact, uh, in America, we're way behind our European um, um, peers. So we need to do some catching up now. Along those lines, I've read a lot recently about how because kids are so computer literate these days, um, some computer um, aided learning programs um, have been very, very successful with kids. And especially with kids from um, disadvantaged um, homes and educations who really take to these programs like ducks to water, they just love them. Are you, are you implementing any of these? Because it would also help, I think it would help the teachers and it might reduce the number of teachers that we need and it would help the students. So it would be a win-win-win if we did more computer-aided learning. We Can you answer that for me, please? I'd be happy to. We absolutely do use technology, but we use it wisely. When we were in the pandemic for three years, and the community needs to know that the, that the pandemic had great effects on our children's learning. We're trying to accelerate learning. Therefore, they need their teachers and they need their smaller class sizes. They don't need larger class sizes. We do have some of the best technology resources, but you have to be careful because there's nothing that replaces a good teacher, a good paraprofessional, a good tutor. And um, we've actually um, piloted a, a couple new technologies and the teachers gave us feedback and they really were not um, helping our children access learning. And so we did not continue with it. So you have to be really very careful. We noticed that during the pandemic, when they were home, when they were using technology, um, it really impaired sometimes their social skills and it impaired their, their reading and writing and math ability. So it's really important that we have them back to community in our schools with our teachers and the support staff to make sure that we're accelerating their learning and they're really catching up after this pandemic. Are you evaluating different types of programs and how they do in other schools? We always do. We Is evaluate, not, yes, we evaluate what we're using and we use, usually use the best that's out there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Representative Amboise. Madam Moderator, I'd like to move the question, please. Second. Okay, that motion was made by Representative Amboise, seconded by Representative Patino. It is a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those online, if you're in favor, please raise your hand. Um, okay, if you can lower your hand. All of those opposed to the question being called. Representative Gothier, Representative Whitney, Representative Wells, Representative Eben, Representative Scott, and Representative Cerf. Oh, I'm sorry, and Representative Chase. Sorry, I missed you. That's the second time. I'm sorry, you're like tiny back there. Okay, if you could lower your hands. Anyone abstaining? Okay, then that motion passes. We have, oh, quick math, 31 minus seven. 24, thank you. 24 to seven to zero. Okay, so the number on the floor is 79,100. Million. million. I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> Let me try that again. We really cut your budget. <laughs> Woo, that would have been a lot. Sorry. 79 million. One hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred and seventy-one. I'm going. Rep, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote, please. So the number again: seventy-nine million one hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-one. That is the lower number. Go ahead. Representative Adams. Yes. Ambois. Nay. Bailey? Yes. Burrell? No. Bright? Yes. Casper? No. Surf? Yes. Chase? Yes. Hop? No. Dean Chimbrot? Yes. Eben? No. Gardner? Yes. Gothier? Nope. Gustafson? Hainline? No. Hanscom? No. Caden? No. Massett? No. McElroy? No. Merritt? No. Norman? Powers Kristen? No. Powers Sean? No. Pacino? No. Scott? Yes. Semerero? No. VZ Williams? No. Watson? No. <coughs> Wells? No. <coughs> Whitney? No. Rusk? No. Brickman is here. 23 no's. And Brickman is here. Oh, Frickman. I'm so oh. Point of information. I'm sorry. Hold on Not one second. We're still in the middle of a vote. We're here. hold on. We're still in the middle of a vote. Representative Frickman. Nine sixteen. I didn't get the vote. I wanted to vote no. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So it's so that motion fails eight to twenty four to, to zero. zero. Representative Eben. I was trying to alert you that we had a new member. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Representative Surf. Uh, yes, I'd like to put a new number on the floor. I would like to try to cut the budget by $1 million exactly. So the new number would be um, $80,510,610. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by, I'm sorry, seconded by Representative Gardner. Motion made by Representative Sir. Would you like to speak to your motion? Um, yes, well, briefly, the same reasons as before. I think this would help the taxpayers. It would bring the increase down a, a bit. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not the full cut to last year's number. So I, I think this is a reasonable cut. Um, hoping people will consider it that way and i know our school system is good enough to be able to help the residents out with that and still maintain the quality of the education thank you representative gothier thank you um superintendent austin um one thing that I think I'd like to understand a little bit deeper. I've been looking for an index of what different services every other, uh, I'll move over. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, so looking at um, some of the salary increases and other expense increases in here, um, I see that operational support jumped 1.2. Am I correct in thinking that's like the administrative salaries or partially the administrative salaries? I don't know what line you're looking at. What are you? I lost my page too. Oh. <laughs> so um, it it listed it out. It listed salaries? out all. Yeah, it, list, it listed out salaries, and there was one broken out for teachers. So I know the jump wasn't for teachers, um, but it said operational support under other services. I'm going to have to refer to um, Ken Knight, who's our business manager. You're you're saying so the here, I found it the uh, five five dash one five dash one. So Ken. the, the five category five. Yeah. Um, under support services operational support, it's a one million two hundred ninety four thousand one hundred and four increase for the year. Is that administrative salaries? What what's going? What's ad operational support? We're gonna get some information from Ken. From <laughs> yeah, uh, I can answer that. Thank you. Um, so uh, that is being driven by uh, by really two, uh, maybe two, three factors. Uh, the biggest factor is the uh, the renegotiation of bus contract over the over this year. Uh, in addition, that uh, that line also would cover uh, the increase in our diesel fuel and heating and electricity. So th those are, those are the things that are driving that increase. Understood. Thank you so much. Um, so going again up to the next um, block on that 5-1, there's instruction, and it tells me what the, the budget is for all of that, and support services. Is that the administrative salaries? I'm just trying to understand where those are sitting in here. Ken, did you hear uh, that? No. Uh, can you tell me what, what, uh, what we're, line where it says general support? Yep, so we're in the budget book on page 5-1. Um, the title is Groton Public Schools. The and red it, budget yep. book. Yep, the, the red budget book. And there's two tables. Um, I addressed the, the second table, but now I want to talk about summary at program level one. Description, instruction. Okay. I'm assuming instruction are our educators. Correct. And support services are uh, support services, so it, it, it kind of is broken down um, on that next uh, level down. Uh -huh. That includes support services for pupil, for, pe for staff, general support, and the operational support that we've talked about previously. Okay, so again, I'm looking... So that $1,826,000 is, is inclusive of, of, of like the bus contract and, mm -hmm. and the fuel and the uh, electricity. So what's, what's that like 600000 delta between the increase shown in summary program level one and summary program level two? Uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, general support is increased by three hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, 
um, and that is um, increases um, in um, uh, the, the central office. Uh, then there's a staff uh, increase of 68,278. That's uh, I, mostly. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop you. I'll stop you because I I found my own confusion and I corrected it. Um, but again, the question: Where's the administrator's salaries baked into this whole thing? I I don't see that broken out specifically, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, administrator salaries would be under uh, school administration, which is part of uh, general support services. Five three. Page five three. three. So I just had to flip the page. General support services. You always got me, Jackie. Thank you. All right. Let me. So on five three, you're saying, which yeah, is. If you go down the left yeah. under general support services. Mm -hmm. School administration, right there. Two, four, one, zero. Okay. All right. Thank you. Correct. And the the average salary increase was two point four percent. Were those all contractual on the administrative yes. salaries? Yes. Are all administrators under all, contracts with all obligated All administrators are under contracts increases? except for central office and the superintendent. Okay, thank you. Representative Cobb. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I'd like to move another number. Okay. Not sure if this is legal, but I'm gonna give it a try. I'd like to move $81,510,626. Oh, it Reckless. is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said I didn't know if it was legal. Yeah. Okay. I made a mistake. I was a nuisance. <laughs> it's, a, it's considered a frivolous motion. Okay. Seeing no other hands raised, Representative Gardner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Everybody's talking about how much their costs are going up and fuel and electricity and, well, the taxpayers' costs are going up too. And uh, not everybody has a union contract. And uh, there's n not really a correlation between the amount of money you spend per student and the actual quality of their education. If that was the case, the, the kids in Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, would all be very well educated because they spend a lot more money than we do. And uh, I have my doubts sometimes whether the students are actually being educated. All you have to do is do a man on the street interview with uh, college students and uh, they really don't know very much. So, and uh, the other thing I would like to say is these salaries are contracted so that means the students and the taxpayers are being held hostage by the teachers union. So. Representative Whitney. Uh, just first briefly, I'd say that I have great confidence that our uh, growing generation is uh, going to bring our future in good hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are being well educated at all levels of public education. Um, but then I'd also like to say that uh, I, only st I do not support the amended number. I only support the uh, original number. Um, I, I don't understand really. Um, I understand the, the desire to uh, trim the budget and keep taxes low. I don't understand the tendency, other than it's a big target number, to um, uh, try to reduce the budget on the backs of our children and our educators in our schools. Um, and then I'll just point out a parallel uh, with public safety. We heard the same things. Uh, you know, uh, labor costs are going up. There's more training, more requirements, and more responsibilities that um, we as a society um, um, deem important. So thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other hands, the number on the floor is Eighty million five hundred and ten thousand six hundred and twenty seven. I will do a roll call vote. <coughs> okay. Representative Adams. Yes. Ambois. Nope. Education is a real Bailey. Yes. Burrell. Bright? Yes. Casper? No. 
surf? Yes. Chase? Yes. Cop? No. Dean Chimbrot? Yes. Eben? No. Frickman? No. Gardner? Yes. Gothier? No. Gustason? He is no longer on. He's there. He's oh, he's there. Sorry. He's there. Representative he's there. Gustafson? Uh, no, I said no. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, Hainline? No. Hanscom? No. Caden? No. Massett? No. McElroy? No. Merritt? No. Norman? No. Kristen Powers? No. Sean Powers? No. Pacino? No. Scott? Yes. Semerero? No. BZ Williams? No. Watson? No. Wells? No. Whitney? No. And Rusk? No. So again, that fails 8 to 24 to 0. So the current number on the floor that we are voting on now. Wait. Representative Gothier. I'd like to move a number. I really do feel for the MVR. Don't get like don't think I don't understand. You're that's nervous? that's the desire, right? Is is to hold that MVR. Um, but my number is eighty one million four hundred and eighty five thousand nine hundred and fourteen. This is a twenty four thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollar reduction, which I believe is the non contractual salary increases. Um, I'm hoping that this is a little bit of a give um, without completely harming our students. Um, I know otherwise we can't really decide where the cuts are going to happen, but maybe in this way we can do something to chip away at an increase. Even, even nominally, I know it's close to frivolous if you want to, I don't have a second yet, so you don't have to second it, but I'm trying to Yeah, can balance. we get a second? Is we there a second on the floor? Please? We have been, second. Representative Gardner, I'm just going to note that we have been discussing this topic for an hour and 40 Five minutes approximately yeah. at this point, just so we know. Usual. Um, and I'm not saying we can't continue discussion. Um, this is where we're at. Is there any discussion on Representative Garden, uh, Gothier's number? Representative Whitney. Just, just a quick point that um, in the town services side of things, the town manager has stated before that um, they, they try to maintain parity between the uh, union and non-union um, people. Otherwise, uh, it falls out of step, and eventually um, you're not able to uh, retain people or attract new ones. And I would say the Board of Ed has done the same. Thank you. Okay, so the number we are voting on now is 81, 81, $81,485,914. It was seconded by Gardner. We're going to, again, do a roll call vote. Okay. Sorry about that. 
Okay. Adams. Yes. Ambois. No. Bailey. Yes. Burrell. No. <laughs> Bright. No. Casper. No. Surf. Yes. Chase. No. Cop. Dean Shimbrock. No. Eben. No. Frickman. No. Gardner. Yes. Gothier. Yes. Gibbs. Oh, sorry, she's not here. Gustafson. No. Hainline. No. Hanscom. No. Caden. No. Massett. No. McElroy. No. Merritt. No. Norman. No. Kristen Powers. No. Sean Powers. No. Pacino. No. Scott. Yes. Was that a yes? That was a yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Cimarero. No. V.Z. Williams. No. Watson. No. Wells. No. Whitney. No. Rusk. No. So that motion fails. 26 to 26 to 0. So the num Representative Frickman. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to the new number, uh, and I support the original number. Um, and I also want to take a quick second to say that I think you guys are doing a great job. And, and for a representative to compare our kids to uh, a skit on TV is an insult to our students, um, and that didn't take kindly. So also I want to say happy Th Teacher Appreciation Week to our teachers and our administrators. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So the number on the floor now is 81,510,627. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Okay, if you could lower your hand, please. Okay, all those opposed. We have Representative Adams, Representative Chase, Representative Gardner, Representative Bailey, Representative Scott. If you could please lower your hands. Representative Scott, if you could lower your hand, please. Thank you. Anyone abstaining? Representative Dean Shinbrot. So that motion passes 25 to 5 to 1. Thank you all for hanging out with us in that vote. We are going to take a 10 minute recess, so if you can please be back by 945. Thank you. Thank you.
Back at 946. Next up is CIP 5A on page 255, which is, I believe, zero. I'm sorry, page 225, which is a zero budget, zero everything. So there's absolutely nothing we can do. So we are going to continue to move on. Uh, point of order, Madam. Yes. Moderator? Hi. Yes. Um, for other CIPs that we zeroed, we did have discussion on it. Um, I think that that should be afforded to every CIP, regardless of whether or not they were zeroed. We, did you guys discuss it in your meeting? I, I, we discussed them. I'll read the, that portion of the minutes. Okay. Go it's, for it. it's out of order in terms of just out of order in our minutes, um, out of sequence, I'll say. Okay. Um, and I'll just read it for the four and then read what we have in the minutes for that. And then you can go from there. Uh, CIP 5A, Fitch High School Athletic Facilities, page 225. CIP 5B, uh, Fitch High School Field House, page 226. CIP 5E, Fitch High School Culinary Arts, page 227. CIP 5H, Fitch High School Bleachers, page 230. These CIPs are zero in both the town managers and town council budget. Therefore, the RTM cannot fund these CIPs. The committee did not vote on recommendations for these CIPs. Uh, Board of Ed Chair Watson spoke to the importance of funding these CIPs in coming years. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we will move on to CIP 5F, Security Cameras, page 228. Thank you. So this is CIP 5F, security cameras, page 228. Motion by Representative Chase to recommend $245,000 for CIP 5F security cameras. Seconded by Representative Gustafson. Rationale, this is the amount passed by the town council. Passed, five in favor, zero opposed, and no abstentions. This CIP covers upgraded, up, this CIP covers upgrading cameras radios, other security hardware, and camera management systems at older schools to equal the security equipment and software in the newer schools. A state grant application may provide a 48 to 58 percent reimbursement if funded. So I will move $245,000. By Chair Whit, sorry, motion made by Chair Whitney, seconded by um, Representative Bright. Is there any questions or comments, Representative Gothier? So maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I'm looking at the description for G, where it discusses um, cameras, and I'm just wondering what's the difference between the cameras that we're talking about here in F and in G. So is, is one just a service versus actual hardware? Because like, why are we having two different CIPs for cameras is my question. So one, one's a service or a system. Is that what I'm hearing? If I may. Hi, everyone. I'm Clint Kennedy. I'm the director of technology for Groton Public Schools. Uh, you are correct. The G line, the 150, is the, a mutual link system. It is a software solution which will tie and we'll utilize and tie together the cameras and software and services that we have in the current uh, item that we're talking about. So one's a hardware and one's a software. There are, there's no hardware involved in the G line. But in that. the F line, we're talking about getting correct. the cameras. That is, that's correct. All right. Thank you. Representative Norman. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Representative Gardner had his hand up next. My could apologies. I, could oh. I just add to that? Um, in 5F, there's both hardware and software. Sure. Uh, Representative Gardner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, the cameras are going to be placed in the schools. Where in the schools? Are we talking hallways or all the classrooms? So there is some discussion about whether we should publicly acknowledge the exact location of cameras. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to very much answer your question. I would say they would be both internal and external to the school. Okay. So it, there won't be cameras in the classroom so that... Uh, I think the, the answer to that was that it's not recommended by security, meaning the police, Homeland Security, correct? Um, All right. To specify exact locations. 
Representative Norman. Just a quick question. These security cameras, emergency situations only, this is not gonna be used to like prosecute students on like you did drugs in the bathroom, we're calling the police now? Speak into the mic. Oh, sorry, speak into, do you want me to repeat that question? Yes. Okay, sorry. Quick question, this is to be used in emergency situations only, it is not going to be necessarily to criminalize, or will it also be used to, in like criminalization of like you did drugs in the bathroom or calling the police, like it, what is happening here as evidence for that? The, the technology that this can provide will link our schools to the police department. Should there be uh, someone who comes into the school? Should there be some serious situation that is an emergency situation? Um, this is being done by the state police, so Grasso to also have that on our campus. campus. Um, so it's really important that all of our schools are connected and in case of an emergency, whether a panic button gets pushed, that instead of the police, even though they're just across the street coming in and looking at maps, they'll have a mapped out system that they will see exactly where the emergency is happening and can assist us immediately. Great, I'm super in favor of this then. Representative Gauthier. Uh, okay, um, Representative Whitney. I, I just had a quick question. I, I wrote down that uh, a state grant application may provide, but uh, I was wondering if you could speak to what type of state grant that is, what the program is. And, and if it includes 5G, actually, too. Yeah, it does not include 5G at this time. Uh, we did uh, make application to a state security grant that uh, <laughs> Chief Fusaro forwarded on to us uh, to include these, uh, these cameras. So if we do get that uh, grant, uh, the exact percentage hasn't been determined yet by the state. Uh, uh, it will be de determined by uh, the value of, or uh, the ability of the town to pay at that time. Uh, but uh, these state grants have come in in Groton uh, in the 50% range. Some have been, some have been uh, slightly more than 50% and some uh, just under 48% was the least that I've seen over the years. But. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, there were actually two grants that we've applied for. So there's a federal grant and a state grant. Representative Surf. Uh, yes, I'm in favor of spending whatever we need to spend to keep our children safe. And somebody will probably call point of order on me for this because I suggested it 10 years ago and it was not received happily. But I think our whole school system should go on strike for a few days, including the children, to protest the fact that we haven't completely abolished automatic weapons. Representative Sir, this is staff off topic. Thank you. In our state. Representative Sir, you're out of order. Uh, who said that? Uh, Jill Excuse Rusk. Me? Moderator Rusk said you are out of order. Okay. Okay, but you know it's really easy Moderate, to be out representative of order on something that is so basic. Representative Sir, we are not talking orders, about gun sir. violence right now. I would like to say, as a mother who um, lived through the event at Fitch High School a number of years ago, where they thought that there was a gun in the school, um, it was a very long morning. Um, and I would have loved to have these cameras in the school at that time. Um, it was absolutely terrifying, and I have to say, you have amazing staff. Bring tears to my eyes every time, sorry. Um, amazing staff who kept our kids safe. And thank God it was nothing, um, but it definitely could have been something, so thank you. Um, on that note, sorry, um, the number on Representative Ambois. Okay. No. The number on the floor is $245,000. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Please lower your hands. Do you know what our current number is? 32. 32. Did we skip D? 
Hold there on. is no D. There is no D. Yeah. Um, if you could lower your hands, please. All those opposed? We only have 31 before. Anyone abstaining? That number passes unanimously. We're just trying to make sure we have an exact number. One, two. Excuse me, is this a roll call vote over the other one? No, no I just want to make sure we have left. an accurate count. If you could just hold one moment, please. Evan, Rickman. Um, Evan, Rickman, yep. Manager, do you have times that people left um, in the chat by any chance? So Scott is not up there. In the chat or online? Uh, it, Representative Surf, if you could just hold one moment, please. Um, Richardson Morrow is here. VC Williams is Moderator here. Moderator Russ, there's nothing in the chat unless they did it. Thank you. Some We're just trying way. to um, confirm our number right now. Of Watson. Watson is. I don't oh. see Watson. Oh, yeah, Watson's here. Okay. okay. So. so you have 32 three, minus four. 3. Still. So we you have 20. Lady left? Right here in the middle. Right here in the middle. Yeah, right yes, there. Yes, Kaden. Okay. Yep, we yeah, have she, her. Left. she let three. us know. Kaden. Kaden. Thank you. Up. It's all my fault. It's Kaden, Kaden like Madden. Kaden, thank you. I've been saying it wrong this whole thing. Damn. I know. It's all my, it's, blame it, it's me. And she never, She's such a nuisance. 29, I think. <laughs> oh, she never corrected me. I feel like such a bad okay. person. 14 on Zoom. <laughs> Twenty-nine. So 29 of us, so that. Mm -hmm. We did just vote on this, correct. Thank you. 29 to zero to zero. Thank you. It's getting late. All right. We have one more CIP to go. That's correct? Uh, uh, two. No, we have two more to go. CIP. Uh, five. Oh, G. It is 10 of 1. Can I get a consensus? Are we willing to stay at least through the CIPs yeah. and hopefully one more? Yeah. yeah. We're good. Everybody can stay for a couple yes. more minutes. Okay. CIP 5G. So I'll just say first that uh, there's a question about CIP 5C. Uh, there's a question about uh, CIP 5C. There, there is no 5C in the budget book, and there's no 5D either. Um, so this is uh, CIP 5G, District Safety and Security, 
It's page 229. A motion by Representative Chase to recommend 150,000 for CIP 5G, district safety and security. Seconded by Representative Whitney. Rationale, this is the amount passed by the town council. Passed, five in favor, none opposed, and no abstentions. This CIP covers the cost of the MutualLink that connects all school security systems and allows for centralized first responder access to communications and security cameras during critical events. So I move uh, $150,000 <laughs> for CIP 5G. Motion was made by Chair Whitney, seconded very excitedly by <coughs> Representative Bright. Representative Gauthier. I'm sorry, Chair, were you done with your minutes? <laughs> Good. Okay. Yes. Representative Gauthier. I, um, just some general questions I always ask with these things. Are there going to be any associated maintenance costs with this software? Yes, there, yes, there will be associated maintenance costs. This represents the dollars necessary for uh, us to set up hardware, uh, forgive me, the service as well as licensing for three years. Okay, and those maintenance costs will be baked into your budget going forward? Correct. And how long is this software good for before we need to go out to bid and buy more software, new software, different software, better uh, software? I, I'm, I'm doing my best educated guess. I would, I would believe this system would be fully functional and operational. This along with the CIP budget, which is necessary for this because this sits on top of that hardware, camera, hardware, software, and so forth. I would, I would say seven to 10 years. Thank you. Any other questions? Representative Gardner. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, this cost, does that include software updates? Over it, the it does indeed. Okay, thank you. Representative Surf. Um, yes, just um, as a precaution against a freedom of information problem, um, five, uh, 5G is not on our RTM list. I it don't is. know if there's a reason for that or somebody just forgot. But it, it is not on our list, so I don't know whether you need to add it there just to cover there, us. Or I was, see it in my book, but I don't see it on the list. It was added on um, on the list. It's we're good. It's a draft. <clears throat> the only thing that is foyable would be the actual agenda, and it is on the agenda, so we're good. Okay. So the number that we are moving is $150,000. All those in favor, please raise your hand. I got you. Okay, if you can put your hands down. If you can put your hands down, please. Representative Frickman and Surf, if you could put your hands down, please. We can move forward. All those opposed? Anyone abstaining? So that motion passes unanimously, 29 to 0 to 0. Next up is CIP 5I, Fitch High School Sewer Line Repair. This is on page 231. Motion by Representative Gibbs to recommend 75,000 for CIP 5I Fitch High School sewer line repairs. Seconded by Representative Gustafson. Rationale, this is the amount passed by the town council. Passed five in favor, none opposed, and no abstentions. This CIP covers the cost of needed sewer line repairs in the sub-level of the old section of Fitch High School. <coughs> I will move uh, $75,000 for CIP 5I. Gothier second. I got Gothier. I didn't hear whoever else said it. Sorry. Okay. Are there any questions? This was something that got brought up a while ago. We discussed this here in this room. Okay. All right. Seeing no questions, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Representative Amboise. Okay, 
everyone can lower their hand, please. Anyone opposed? Oop, sorry, didn't wait long enough. Representative Surf, I believe you voted yes. <coughs> Let me lower my hand. Okay. Clarification, All those uh, Madam Moderator, I wasn't in favor. I wasn't, wasn't Thank favor. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Then that motion passes 29 to 0 to 0. So we are at, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for staying. And so where we are at right now is um, Fire District. And we have Representative Chase. I would like to do that if everybody is okay with that. Okay, yeah. Chief, if you want to come on up. Okay. So we are on. Madam Moderator, Watson, I'm leaving. Okay, thank you, Representative Watson. We do need to keep 22 to keep a quorum. So we have 28. I'm staying. <laughs> okay. So we are on item number 1092, Fire District's pilot on page 182. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Um, 1092, the Fire uh, District's pilot, a amount was moved for $436,383. $436,383 by Representative Pop and seconded by Representative Samarero. Um, this is um, an increase across all districts, kind of a flat um, increase with a bit more of a bump up on Pequannock Bridge. It was explained that um, the Pequannock Bridge Fire District has the largest share, not only of um, places to, to serve, but also of the non-taxable property. So the discussion that was held, um, Representative Surfed um, asked if this was really just redistributing pilot dollars from the state and not really an expenditure. Uh, the answer was pretty much yes, they, they receive part, part of the state pilot funds that the, the town of Groton receives. Uh, Representative Gothier uh, asked a few questions about how much the town is receiving in pilot, what that looks like in terms of what we're actually owed from the state and um, what that actually looks like for Chief Driscoll. Um, and he indicated that from the properties in cumulative, he loses about $1.5 million in taxes uh, year over year. And this, I believe, um, would account for about 30%, if I have that note correct. Um, anyways, 35%, uh, where are we going? The reason that Pequannock Bridge specifically was upped as I mentioned, was because of um, the fact that we haven't done this um, calculation in terms of how many dollars, we haven't done like an evaluation in many years, and I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, unanimous vote, five in favor, zero opposed, zero abstaining. Uh, Manager Burt or Chief Driscoll, if you'd like to speak to this. Can you put it in on the floor? Uh, I thought I did, 436,383. Made by the chair, seconded by Representative Chase, I believe. Yes. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off. Um, you can see on page 182 the uh, detail about the fire district pilot. It, there's two components. Um, one is the pilot for state um, properties. Of course, uh, there are a lot of non taxable state properties throughout town, um, both uh, you know, fire districts. Um, uh, the town, we don't collect, receive any direct taxes on that. So what the state does is give you a portion. It's not, not whole, but they give you a portion of what you're missing out in taxes. Um, it, just so you know what we received from the state uh, last year is about 1.7 million. It's in the ballpark of two and a half this year, and then it's about 1.5 for next year. Um, however, the amount has stayed the same that we've been giving the fire districts since about 2002. Um, the other part is the town making up for town-owned properties that aren't taxed and collected by fire districts. So, as I said, it's been stable, a total of 246000 since 2002. There's pre some previous history to that, but I think that's the relevant number right here. Um, there's been a lot of talk over the years of trying to get a little more parity with the fire uh, districts. So I put in this year 100000 first of all, for 
Pocahontas Bridge fire is impacted the most by uh, non-taxable property. Um, I put in 100,000 as a start for Pocahontas Bridge this year, and that was sort of just as, I think over time we'll probably need to get this up higher. However, as a starting place, that's about what they pay for a rental for fire hydrants from GU. Um, so that was sort of my, my um, thought process. And then t taking that 100,000 as a start, I then prorated amounts for the other districts and then at the town council, they, I don't have the number for me, they added that other 30 or so thousand on for, yeah, for directly for Pocahontas Bridge Fire, bringing you the total up to 405 total. And just so you know, the uh, town's public safety committee has just started last night reviewing this for the future to see where they wanna go in the future. It's gonna take a few months, but I, I expect it'll at least go up some more eventually, so. Any questions? Seeing none, the number on the floor is $436,383. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, if you can lower your hands, please. If you could lower your hands, please. Representative Dean Shinbrot, if you could lower your hand, please. Okay, all those opposed? Anyone abstaining? Representative Gardner, that motion passes 27 to zero to one. Good. Thank you so much for waiting so late tonight. We appreciate your time. Next, we have three more things on the list. So page 53, um, item number 1001, leg legislative policy. Account 1001, the legislative policy and amount for $42,500 was moved by Representative Cadden and seconded by Representative Semerero. Um, Mr. Burt talked to the fact that this was mostly uh, the Connecticut <laughs> Conference of Municipalities, um, as well as a few little things um, for kind of like the town council RTM. I understand it was like printing agendas and such, um, if I get that right. Um, Representative Cerf asked um, about the Jabez, Jabez house, um, why there was nothing allocated there. Uh, Mr. Burt indicated that it's kind of an old line item. It hasn't been allocated for a while because it's not being used, but maintenance is still being performed through the Public Works Department. Um, so it's still getting regular maintenance. There's heat running to keep the pipes from freezing and such. Um, this account was moved unanimously. Um, five in favor, zero opposed. So I'd like to motion $42,500 for this account. Any question, I'm sorry, any questions on this item? Representative Eben. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Yeah, I, I was just curious, and it, I have to say it was very hard to hear um, Representative Gauthier read her minutes, so maybe it was said, but the cover page on this says um, attend town council meetings, attend regular RTM meetings, but I see this more as material, so I'm just wondering where the action verb is. Like, is, is paying someone's salary to attend these meetings, since that's what it seems to imply? Well, and, and that's, uh, that cost center has existed for probably 20 years that way, so it just, it, that's how, it, until it gets restructured, that's how it's been left, because uh, it really doesn't change barely at all from year to year. Um, it, it, as Representative Gothier said, it's almost exclusively, or a huge amount of it, is just the CCM um, membership, which every municipality in Connecticut is a member. There are lobbyists. They provide a ton of educational classes, that type of thing. Um, and uh, they also do uh, some pay study work that we take advantage of. Uh, a couple of the other interesting <laughs> items of interest in this is we do reimburse for uh, flags for uh, cemeteries for uh, veterans' uh, memorials. Um, 
initiatives. That is the beautification uh, dollars, the beautification committee, 4,000. Next year, I anticipate, if you recall, up until two years ago, maybe we used to have the t water taxi under that in here. And then at, once we realized, oh, that's going to stay around for a while, then we moved it over with uh, the other outside agency thing. So this is still in this one at this point. Um, we would probably move it next year for next year's budget. And is um, the Jabez Smith I see is zeroed out. Is that um, uh, mostly dealt with in CIPs at this point? It's through the public works budget. They um, they do all the regular maintenance of it. Um, uh, we mow it. We keep the heat going on it. So it, 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 what it used to be mostly out of this was the fuel oil, um, but that was moved and consolidated um, not long ago. Thank you. Um, okay, Representative Cup was next. Um, I, can you check the number on the board? I think it might be 42650, 42650. Yep. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Um, was that somebody else had their hand? Is that you too? Sure, that's okay, yeah. Representative Surf. I'm sorry. Um, yes, this is for who to attend the, all these meetings. Well, it's the town. It's the town council budget, but really the bulk of this is for their membership to the CCM. Also, it's the town council attending other meetings. Is that it? Under that cost center, yes. Is that our just? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Finish. It's not for you or your staff or any of the other administrative staff to attend the meeting? No, this is a strictly, uh, uh, unless you come, like I mentioned, it has beautification in there, but no, there's no, no staff in this um, budget. Yeah, I'm only questioning that top number, um, which is a 30,000 to a, a town council. And, and that's the CCM um, membership. Mostly CCM. Okay, great. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. The CCM is uh, 33,000 of that. Okay. It might go up a little bit next year. It's 33,000 this year. We haven't heard yet for next year. And just for clarification on that, all elected officials, all city, or all town employees can Utilize. attend all CCM. Yeah, you're correct. Yes. We, we have quite a few, lot of people that go to those actually, they're, and they're free to members. Representative Surf, did you have another question? Oh, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. Okay. Seeing no other questions, the number on the board is $42,650. All those in favor, please raise your hand. <clears throat> okay, if you can lower your hands. Anyone opposed? Sorry, didn't quite give them time to all get their hands down. Representative Frickman, if you could lower your hand, please. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? That motion passes 29 to 0 to 0. Next. 28. 28. My apologies. 28 to 0 <coughs> to 0. Next up is item 1006, legal services, found on page 63. Account 1006, Legal Services, the amount for $385,000 was moved by Representative Kopp and seconded by Representative Semerero. Uh, Representative Cerf asked if the miscellaneous line could be broken further uh, to understand. Sorry. You okay? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Representative Cerf asked if the miscellaneous uh, line item could be broken down further to understand where those costs were being allocated. Mr. Burt indicated uh, not really. It was mostly from the RTM. Um, a lot of it, like when we have questions in the middle of meetings and trying to get a, an answer quickly. Um, Representative Gothier asked if um, the town went out to bid, how many respondents they received, um, what were the results. Mr. Burt indicated that there were multiple, more than three, uh, or at least three respondents, um, and that this was a significantly lower bid, in part due to the length of the contract, but also um, the fact that they're a municipality, so they usually get a, a lower bid for it. And if we were to choose a new firm, it would be about twice as much. The vote was unanimous on this, um, five to zero to zero. 
I move the number of $385,000. Motion was made by the chair, seconded by Representative Sean Powers. Are there any questions? Representative Sir. Yes, um, this is a question for the town manager. How much does it cost for the uh, town attorney um, to go up to Hartford with all of us who are accused of freedom of information violations? and go through our hearing there. Well, the bigger expense of that is actually how many hours of prep time do they have to do? Not, you know, it's not as expensive. Uh, they're 130 something dollars an hour, but um, but most, that's so, the actual Hartford part's the cheap part. <laughs> well, you have to drive up there and mm, be there. Yeah, and yeah. So just as a, as a rough approximation, can you tell us how much it costs I on could, the average? I how could, much? I could tell you th that when we have something that's a FOIA complaint, I anticipate spending four to five thousand dollars on it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Mr. Burt. This was discussed in committee. It was about thirty-five thousand dollars spent on FOI the past right, year. Right, right, which is up quite a bit from before. We don't usually spend that much on FOI because mo we do most of that work in the house. So unless we get an actual complaint, then we spend money. Yeah, I actually had the uh, pleasure of being having to do that last Friday, so I was just curious how much it cost the town. $35,000. Thank you, Representative Surf. Representative Gardner. No, $35,000. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Mr. Burt, what do we spend the most legal services on? What kind of cases? Or well, is it more of an advisory role? It's... Um, for instance, uh, labor's a lot. The, dealing with union, com not just the negotiations, but the, we spend um, you know, we spend over a hundred thousand on about a hundred thousand like this year on that. Um, the, you know, we get regular complaints. You go to mediation. You have arbitrations, that type of thing. So that's probably the biggest category. Um, well, actually, yeah, we assessment is a found out assessment comes out of the uh, reval fund, Mo some of them, it's split. That can be significant at times. Uh, tax work, helping tax collections, that's fairly significant. Um, you have a lot of random stuff. Public works, you know, about 26,000 this year. You know, it, 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 each thing kind of moves depending on what's happening. For instance, this year we had uh, three contracts besides a lot of other stuff going on for the labor, so. And just a reminder, per charter, we're going to have a um, fourth quarter transfer for about 190000 at the next meeting. Per charter, it's guaranteed access for, for this, so we end up having to pay whatever we have to pay. So. And so if you come up short in this budget, comes out of the general fund at the end of the year? Fourth quarter, yeah. Fourth it is quarter. a fourth quarter transfer, right? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, Madam Moderator, I'd like to move another number. Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There a second. I'll second. Second about Chase. Do you want to speak to your number? Uh, no. <laughs> Can I say something? Yeah. Well, and as I mentioned, we had about one hundred ninety thousand uh, we over this year that we have to do. Um, which luckily we had enough contingency for. However, if you had a you know, we've had winters where we've gone, we've spent more than the 300000 just on snow <laughs> removal. We've hit the four four fifty mark in some years. Um, so I would not, so this is a continuing trend upward, and we're getting a heck of a deal. <laughs> um, I, I've used outside attorneys for other things, and it's more than, it's two to two and a half times typically the price. But I would not recommend going that low. You're going to pay whatever we have to pay, and you could end up paying more than what we have for contingency. So... Okay, seeing no other hands raised. The number currently on the floor is $350,000. All in favor, please raise your hand. We have Representative Gothier. Oh, sorry, wrong. Nope. No, nope. sorry. <laughs> Representative Gardner. V.C. Williams. Gustafson. Dean Shinbrot. Eben. Surf, Frickman, yes, and Bailey. Okay, I'm 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All those opposed to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, to eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, if you could please lower your hands. Uh, point of order. One moment, please. We're in the oh, middle sorry. of a yeah. I'll wait. vote. Anyone abstaining? Okay, that motion fails 8 to 20 to 0. What was your point of order? I just noticed the number of people voting yes online. I was wondering if they knew they were voting on the uh, amended lower number. Just it was announced? But they have connection issues, that's why. Okay. So the number now on the floor. I can is hear it just fine. The yeah, number we now. We're aware of that. The number now on the floor is three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Hold on, let me erase real quick. Okay. The number Wait, now. Which, uh, are the, we still on on legislative? I I got lost here. Yes, we we no, are on legal, on services. legal services. Page sixty-four. Sixty-four. Page That's sixty-four. What I the number now on the floor is $385,000. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, if you can put your hands down, please. I believe that was unanimous, but I'm gonna ask the question. All those opposed, Representative Gardner? Anyone abstaining? So that motion passes 27 to 1 to 0. All right, the last thing on our budget tonight, or on our agenda tonight, um, is 1010 legal, or I'm sorry, let me try that again. 1010 executive management on page 66. Account 1010 executive management. Um, the committee moved the number of $348,876, um, moved by Representative Cerf and seconded by Representative Samarero. Um, discussion was about the um, I believe increase, um, let me look at that, the increase uh, due to a part-time position being added. Representative Cerf asked about the $68,000 of allowances and what that represented. Mr. Burt indicated it was the benefits in the town manager's contract. The committee passed this number unanimously, five to zero zero. I'd like to move the number of $348,876. Point of uh, information, no one online can hear anything. Okay. so. We are currently on item 1010, page 66. The number that was moved was $348,870, I'm sorry, let me redo that. $348,876. The motion was made by Chair Gothier. The motion was seconded by Chase. Representative Chase. Do you wanna? So I, just one thing, I saw something pop up in the chat there. Um, can you hear us, Representative Eben, or other members online? Yes, I can hear now, but it just froze and it cut out for like 30 seconds before okay. when you were chatting. And the two comments just say we can hear. So. Now you can hear. Um, is there, do I need to repeat myself? Do you need to re, do you need Maybe to? Maybe you said it, but I, I didn't hear why the number is I, higher. No, uh, because of a part-time position? Members. An additional part-time position. Representative Cerf asked about clarification on the $68,000 allowances item, and that is for benefits in the town manager contract. Contractual costs. Are there any other questions? Representative Gardner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. What is the part-time position? Uh, when I first arrived, there was three people in the office. I had a $100,000 uh, third position. Um, 
when she retired about a year into my being here and I didn't replace that, what I did was take one other, the HR position, and took 10% of their time to help out a little bit. Um, uh, that's no longer there, of course. Um, over time, it's gotten incredibly busy. Um, there's a large list of things I can't get to. So it's a part-time, no benefits, um, up to 19 hour uh, clerical position to help out. What that will allow is to take some duties away from Lisa, my assistant, the, um, my assistant, so that she could take out a few kind of mid-level things, so that frees me up to do some other things. Okay, so. and my other question would be, what are the um, benefits in the manager's contract hmm. that it, it involves this increase? Well, that doesn't involve this increase, no. That's, it it was, that's been in, the, in it for years. Okay, so. thank you. Mm -hmm. Seeing no other hands, we are voting on $348,876. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay, if you could lower your hands, please. Representative Bemboise, if you could lower your hand, please. Thank you. Um, all those opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> that number passes 28 to 0 to 0. I'd like to make a motion to recess to Monday, May 15th. No. No? Oh, yes, to Monday, May 15th. <laughs> yes, Thank you're you. right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a second? Second. Thank you. All right, all in favor? All right, we will see you Monday Bye. on the 15th. Districts two and seven. Please bring snacks. We're up again. Two and seven. We're up at seven, it's rocks. Well, seven rocks. I don't know. That's I know. I, I have snacks. Like snacks. I'll bring nice to, to Who is district team. six? District two and district six. Do we have anybody in the room? That's why we didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're not coming. We're not bringing you snacks. <laughs> 